The long anticipated feature is finally here. Drum roll, please. We can create our own fixtures in Sound Switch. With this latest release, 2.8.5, we now have access to the Fixture Manager. No longer do we have to rely on the Sound Switch team to create our fixtures for us. We can do it ourselves. In my experience, the support team has been super awesome and very helpful in getting in those fixture requests. But let's be honest, so many new fixtures come in and we have been bombarding them and sometimes they get a backlog. So now we can just create our own fixtures and that is awesome. I think it's a step in the right direction. And so not only can we create our own fixtures, and access the previous fixtures that SoundSwitch has created, but we can share our fixture profiles with the community at large and we can access those as well. And so today I am gonna walk through this process and show you how to do it step by step. In my example today, I'm gonna be creating a new fixture profile for the both IR4 uplights. And right now at the time of making this video, there isn't a fixture profile for this light per se. But most of us have been getting around that by using a similar fixture profile that has an identical DMX settings. So that's what I've been doing, but I'm just going to show you for the example today on how to add one. And something I've missed about my movers is split colors. That has not been available. And now with this fixture manager, you can achieve split colors and I'm going to show you how. First step is you want to update sound switch to the latest version 2.8.5 and you want to download the fixture manager, whether it's for Mac or Windows. So after you're done downloading, install the fixture manager, upgrade your sound switch, and it's going to prompt you to log into your InMusic account. If you don't have one already, you can just create it. But that's just basically how you can access the cloud components so that it knows who you are when you upload something and it lets you download it from the cloud. And so it takes a moment to download all of the existing profiles, but once it's done, it'll look something like this. So this fixture library panel should look familiar. This is what we see in sound switch. It shows all of the manufacturers and all of the lights. And there's three new check marks right here. So it's showing like the sound switch production, what we have been used to seeing, our local fixture profiles that we create ourselves, and we have the option to look at the public ones, things that are shared by other individuals to the community. So the first light I wanna do is the both one. So both lighting. And so this one right here, Bo S601 is very similar. In fact, it's an identical DMX profile. So I'm gonna create something very similar to this. I'm gonna show you how to do it from scratch. And I highly recommend that you look at a similar fixture profile, whether it's a mover, a wash, a moving wash, and you kind of copy it. And make sure you have your manual handy because this is how you're gonna know what the DMX channels are. And so I'm just gonna add six channel mode. It's really simple. So this IR4 is very similar to the S601 has two DMX profiles, a six and a 10. I'm just gonna do six, it's really easy. It's just the six colors, one color per channel. When you wanna create a new fixture, go on file, click on new fixture. When you click on a different fixture, it just shows it within this pane. So I can just go back and forth and I can just make edits when I need to. I'm gonna follow the standards of how this fixture is labeled. So both lighting. The model is going to be 4x12 RGBA UV 6 and one Uplight Bow IR4. Notice that like the format is the same. That'll just help keep it clean. Keep your local files clean. Help your sound switch fixture community clean. So we're going to add a six channel mode. So we're just going to keep it similar to this. And that gives me an option for all of the different attributes that I could possibly have for this light. And so obviously I won't need everything. I will only need my colors. And so you assign like how many channels they need. Some have like a fine and a coarse. So sometimes it takes like two channels, like movers for like the pan, it will take over two channels. So you would specify two right here. And then I'll show you where you specify the actual channel that controls that. First red, green, blue. All right, so each of these take one channel and I'm gonna label which channel they are. So one, two, three, four. Actually with both lights, amber comes before white. So this would be four, 
this would be five and here we go i just click remove unused all right that's it my fixture is created i can immediately start using it which i'll show you in just a moment so to make sure that the fixture actually is a valid profile you click check fixture says integrity check passed awesome it's good to go so i can transfer this fixture to the public cloud and i'll show you how you can use the fixture and sound switch in just a few moments all right so i want split colors on my show intimidator spot 255 let me show you a quick shortcut so you don't have to create a new one from scratch you can just take an existing fixture on production you double click that and then i'm going to rename it to like daryl so we know which fixture this is so we can differentiate like what's the production one versus my jerry rigged custom one so i have my intimidator spot here there's a 13 channel mode an 8 channel mode and something called wheels and so these are the colors and this maps like the dmx values to a color or rather a color to a dmx value and i like to use 13 channel mode and so if you notice here the color wheel is determined here by this wheel one it's linked to that and in fact both profiles are linked to that so that's pretty cool so you can just change it in one spot so if we look at our manual we can see that all of these values right here these dmx values control the color and so the dmx values need to go up to this level if we want like split color instead of setting the dmx value manually we have to set like a color and these colors are what trigger these values so we can do it in a couple of different ways we can assign different colors to be the split color white to yellow has to be 65 and we need to assign like an actual color to a color that will trigger it so for example i could choose black okay let's check the fixture integrity check passed let's try it out in sound switch and notice that this pane looks different just like our fixture manager we can choose between production public and local let's just make this easy and look at my local files i don't have many of them all right 13 mode right here let's just go ahead and import one so let's create a static scene just a empty one doesn't really matter and so we assigned it so that if it was black it'd be a split color that might be hard to see so i'm black so notice that values that are close to black stay this but once it starts deviating it changes color so we could choose like different colors like 119 this could be a different split color or 30 15 15 this could be a different split color so you could hack it that way so you could have your split colors so in theory you don't even have to rely on this color wheel feature you can just use an attribute queue to control your color i mean that's what we do with lasers anyway right so to do this we change the type from color wheel to attribute so notice that there's a whole bunch of types in this drop down we'll do attribute two because there's already all right and that's basically it so we can control the color now with an attribute queue Let's go ahead and save this as Daryl 3. It's our newly created one. And notice that the intensity is the only way to turn it off. Because by default, if you look at the manual, when it has a zero DMX value, it's white. So right now it's a zero DMX value and it's gonna be white for color. So the intensity is the only way to turn this thing off. So here we are, here's our new attribute queue of color wheel. And we can change the color this way. All right, and here's our split colors that we've been longing for. And then here's our sliding macros. We can trigger these with a attribute queue. All right, so there you go. That is how you create a fixture and you can modify existing fixtures and you can do split colors with your movers. So I mean, that's a little bit problematic. SoundSwitch has these best practices in place to like protect us from getting in trouble. But now they have unlocked the keys to the kingdom for us to kind of hack the system and get around some of these best practices. And I only recommend that if you're an advanced user, if, if you are like brand new and you're still learning like the basics, I think that could get you in a lot of trouble and SoundSwitch will not support fixtures pushed to the cloud or your own fixtures that you create. They will only support their fixtures that they created, which makes sense. And SoundSwitch has given us a brand new group called the SoundSwitch Fixture Group 
so we can pose questions, talk about the community fixtures and all sorts of things. So what are your thoughts on this new update? Let me know what you think down below. And if you have any comments or questions, also leave those down below and please smash like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.